you guys, this is L.A. Knight, a.k.a. Lady Ash Knight of Book Catalot, and I am super excited to tell you about the cutest book I have ever read in my life. And I know I sound, like, super angry right now, but oh my god, let me tell you, this book is fucking adorable. Excuse my language, because it's a middle grade book, but oh my god. Okay, so, it's called Starcrossed by Barbara D., and it is the cutest thing. Oh my god, sorry. I have, like, never read a middle grade romance, because that's not really a thing you see in middle grade. Um, usually, the there's, like, a lot of limitations on what you can write regarding romantic inclinations in a middle grade novel. Um, I do not know why, because I'm pretty sure there are 12-year-olds out there that are making out behind the school, but whatever. And so, uh, this book is, um, the, the front premise, the main premise, is this girl named Maddie, and Maddie has a crush on this boy, and then Maddie ends up getting cast in her school's production of Romeo and Juliet, and she's in the 8th grade, she gets cast in the 8th grade production of Romeo and Juliet, as Romeo, and the reason why is because the boy who was cast as Romeo, like, just doesn't really have a head for Shakespeare, and he doesn't want to be in the play. He feels stupid, and I feel bad that he feels that way, because, like, Shakespeare is the shit, but, um, that's how he feels, and so he dropped out, and the only person who knew all of his, all the lines for everybody was Maddie, so even though she's a girl, and even though the the, some of the kids were like, that's weird, the teacher cast her as Romeo. The problem is, is that she has a crush on her co-star, the girl who plays Juliet. <coughs> Excuse me, didn't mean to do that. And uh, the girl who plays Juliet is this girl from England who is like an exchange student, or her dad like just moved to America or something. I forget, because that really, like, if there was one line about it and it wasn't that important. The thing that's important is that this girl ends up being part of this clique that is the enemy of Maddie and her friend's clique. And so while the play is being produced and Maddie is falling in love with this girl, her falling in love with this girl reflects the actual plot of Romeo and Juliet. Now, in Romeo and Juliet at the beginning, as an example, the Capulet servants and the Montague servants get in a fight, and then the Prince of Verona shows up, and he's like, all of you shut the fuck up. Y'all need to calm down and stop fighting in my streets. Next person that causes a fight, I'm killing you. Now, obviously, this is a middle-grade non-fantasy novel set in the modern day, so there's obviously not going to be any princes coming down and saying, I'm going to kill you. But so instead, what ends up happening is that Maddie and her friends get in a fight with the girls in this clique, minus the girl who's the Juliet character, um, at a at a ice cream shop called Verona. And the owner, Verona, is like, y'all need to calm down, and in the ne- you guys can't come back until you calm down. And the whole there's, like, different aspects of the play Romeo and Juliet in a middle grade fun friendly way in this book and every time one of those popped up I was like oh my god I know what this is supposed to be this is that one part so it was like really exciting because I'm a total nerd for Romeo and Juliet I love Romeo and Juliet oh for, oh so much of the Romeo and Juliet I love it and so um that was one of the reasons I really liked this book Maddie's voice felt very fresh and very real um, I don't have any friends in middle school, but I do have to sometimes sit with the middle schoolers at my church, and I'm totally okay with that, because they're actually very interesting to listen to, because people think that, like, young kids don't only think about, like, taking selfies, and, you know, oh, I need to tweet about my hamburger, or whatever. I hear old people complain about social media and teenagers all the fucking time, but honestly, in my opinion, uh, teenagers are really smart. And that includes preteens, you know, 11, 12-year-old, even younger than that. It just depends on the person. And I think that, like, the obsession with social media, quote-unquote, is actually a myth. And, yeah, okay, some people are, like, super crazy obsessed with their social media. But I don't think it's an epidemic like everyone else does. So, anyway, so I think Maddie, she came across as, like, really genuine. And she's really cute. And I really like her. Um, I really cared about the struggles that she was going through. She actually didn't know that she liked girls until she met this character. Now, there's this this trope in a lot of queer fiction called gay for you, which is when a typically straight character, um, although sometimes a straight-up gay character, uh, it's funny what I did there, straight-up gay character, anyway, um, 
either a straight character ends up falling in love with someone of the same sex, and they're like, no, I'm straight, I just am in love with you, and I'm willing to expand my horizons specifically with you, but I'm not gay. Or a gay character will fall in love with someone of the opposite sex and say, no, I'm gay, I'm not bisexual, I'm just gay, but I'm willing to expand my horizons for you. You see the second one a lot less often than the first one. So in fiction with older characters, when a character who has a established sexual orientation is suddenly gets a crush on someone of, of the non-orientated gender, that usually ends up leading into the gay for you or um, straight for you, I guess, would be the, uh, the second one. Uh, trope, which is not a good trope to have. That's, that's not cool. Um, but... In this, I mean, Maddie's only, like, 12, so, you know, I mean, she's still exploring her sexuality and trying to figure out what her sexual ori orientation even is, and, um, so she, and she doesn't have that, like, that, like, er, resistance to the idea that she could be bisexual. They don't use the word bisexual, but it's very obvious that, like, she's open to considering that she likes boys and girls. Um, but the only, her only resistance to the idea that she might like a girl, and I really like this actually, is not that there's anything inherently wrong with her liking a girl, but she doesn't want other people to find out because she doesn't want people to treat her funny. And at, at 12, 13, I didn't have that problem because people were treating me funny anyway, but I, that was actually the one secret that I did keep about myself. I was very open about the fact that I grew up in a very strict Baptist area, um, and I was very open about the fact that I, one, was not a Baptist, two, wasn't actually a Christian, I was Wiccan, and three, had no interest in being a Christian, mostly because the Christian kids I knew were actually assholes. Um, no offense to any of you Christian kids who are not assholes, because I realize that this does not describe every Christian kid in the world. I am actually now a Mormon, and so, like, I totally understand that not everybody, um, who is a Christian is, as, is inherently a dick. Um, but most of the kids that I knew at the time were. And so I was very open about the fact that I was not a Christian. I was very open about the fact that I was mixed race. I'm, um, part Apache, part black. I'm, like, I'm mostly half white, half black, with some small smidges of Creek and Apache Native American. Um, N Apache from my mom's side, Creek from my dad's side, ironically. That's kind of interesting, I think. But, um, And so, like, I was very open about the fact that not only was I mixed, but I was proud of the fact that I was mixed, and I refused to have to choose between one or the other, which was something that the kids that I knew made me do, or tried to make me do. They tried to be like, you can't be black and white, you have to be black or white, and I was very adamant and vocal about the fact that, no, I was both. Um, I was very adamant and vocal about the fact that I was not a Christian. I was very vocal about pretty much everything in my life, except for the fact that I was bisexual. I kept that a huge secret, because I knew if that came out, it was going to be a whole big thing. I lived in Montgomery, Alabama, in 1998, it was going to be a whole big thing, and even the teacher allies and kid allies that I had just barely at that point were going to flip their shit. I knew it. And so when Maddie is like, oh my god, please don't tell anybody because her friend figures it out, Um, I believe it's the Benvolio character. Yeah, the Benvolio character. Cause she has two friends, one who's very much like Benvolio always trying to keep the peace, very quiet and soft-spoken and gentle. And then her other friend who likes to quote Shakespeare at people, which I think is funny, um, likes to quote Shakespeare at people and is very on the ball with the insults and telling people to fuck off, except in, you know, G-rated terms, because this is a middle-grade book. And very much like Mercutio there, you know, when he's like, Tybalt, how about you go, you know, jump off a bridge, because I'm way cooler than you. When her Benvolio character friend is like, you know, I, I didn't realize that you liked girls, you know, and I'm totally okay with it, but I just didn't realize. And Maddie's like, oh my god, you don't, don't even say that out loud where people can hear you, because if anyone finds out, they're gonna flip, they're gonna freak out. And I thought that was really, really realistic, and I really liked it. Um, I thought that the whole thing was handled very, very, very well. I thought it was very genuine and very sweet. 
And I thought Maddie's struggle to figure out what she wanted to do about this knowledge was very realistic. Um, I thought that the romance aspect was, one, very cute. Oh my god, it was so cute. Oh, the flirting! They were so cute together! And then um, I thought that was cute, and then I thought that the it felt real and age-appropriate at the same time. Like, I realized that there are 12-year-olds out there who are probably having sex. And I realized that there are 12-year-olds out there who have probably had kids already. And so I realized that, like, you know, when I say real, I don't mean that I think it is unrealistic for somebody Maddie's age to be having sex or, you know, to be having babies, because I know what happens. But I also felt that the romance, as it was portrayed in the book, like, the author did not approach it as being like, oh, aren't you cute? You think you're in love. Like, she was very respectful of the fact that Maddie does have real feelings. And I really like that, because too often I see adults, even adult authors, treating their their young characters' feelings like they are somehow less because they are young. And I really don't like that. And so I really liked the fact that the author didn't do that. Um, I really think this book... This book is just adorable. I really like it. Um, I think everyone should read it, especially fans of Romeo and Juliet, because nobody dies! Which, for Romeo and Juliet, is almost unheard of. Oh my god. Also, um, I think that we should show our support for this book specifically because apparently I found out that the author... This is how I actually found out about the book. The author was asked to speak at a school in her state about her books that were coming up. And Starcrossed was one of them. And so she started talking about Starcrossed, and then she she was invited by the school to talk about Starcrossed. They knew what the book was about, and they asked her to come talk about the book. But then they were like, they pulled her aside between talks, because she talked to different classes for different periods. They pulled her aside and were like, hey, can you tone down the gay stuff? Because this is a little too gay for us. Um, we think the kids might be upset by all the gay. And she was like, seriously? You asked me to come and talk about the thing. And they were like, yeah, but, I mean, we did, but, you know, too much gay. So can you, like, cut out all the gay? And she, so she ended up doing it, but she was, because she didn't want to get in trouble. But it was really not, that's just not cool. I mean, like, because they were like, the kids aren't old enough for this. And then later, they apologized, the teachers apologized to the kids, not for telling the, the author to not talk about it, but for having the author talk about it before they managed to get to her to tell her not to. Um, they were like, yeah, we're sorry that she had to talk about that gay stuff. We're really sorry. We know that that upset you. And it's like, nobody complained. Nobody complained about this. None of the kids complained, okay? And if the adults were complaining, deal with it. Because, okay, yeah, their tax money pays your your paychecks. But you know what? Like, parents complain about all kinds of shit in the school system. Like, they, t they complain about sex ed, and they complain about dressing out for PE, and they complain about their kids' grades, and they complain about learning about the five religions when you're taking world history, even though it's, like, a nationwide requirement for public school. Like, parents complain about all the shit, and they don't change that, but they're going to change the gay thing. Really? <sighs> anyway, as you can see, I have a lot of feels about the way schools handle certain things, and I could talk about that for decades, but that's not even the point. So we should, we should definitely, and by we I mean everyone who likes books, should definitely put money in this author's pocket, and hype up this book. It's adorable. It's sweet. It's cute. Um, there's strong girl friendships. There's cute little oh, the romance. I like I was grinning the whole time I was reading it. It was so adorable. I just it was so sweet and innocent and fun and healthy. Like I'm so sick of seeing unhealthy relationships in books. So it was nice to see one that was healthy and sweet and like consent was like a low key element to the thing. There, there, nothing happened without anyone's consent. There was no kind of pressure. Everything was great. Nobody outed anybody like as a dick maneuver to get back at somebody. It was great. So, and it ended well. And I really liked it. And I think everyone should read it. So, we're talking about Starcrossed by Barbara D. And this is L.A. Knight from Lady Ash Knight at Book Catalot's channel. And I think you guys should read this book because it's fucking adorable. And I will see you guys 
later. Bye! Bye! Bye!